Hello friends, this is Candle Boom again and we are very very happy that you keep watching our videos. So, today as usual, our master Sonia and me. Let's start. Okay, let's do it. What are you gonna do for us today? As far as I can see, you have a bigger candle in your hands. Yes, we're gonna do uh, bigger candles today. 20 centimeters. Well, this is like so-called 20 centimeters because the the final uh, candle gets about 21, 22 centimeters. Yeah, but the base is 20 centimeters high. We're gonna make uh, this candle with the help of our wax melter green. It's new, it's small, it's compact, but its cells are deep enough. They're 29 centimeters deep and 15 centimeters wide. And that's why we can easily make big candles here. So yes, we can take a, a candle with a 7 centimeter base or 17 centimeter base etc. Basically all our candles. Yes, and we're also going to show you that uh, you can make big candles with this equipment, but you won't have to re-pour uh, the paraffin while working. So this amount of paraffin is going to be enough. One more important thing that you should pay attention to is that we are working at the kitchen right now. Anyone, any person, a housewife or whoever can buy this equipment, uh, get uh, a couple of tables, one for uh, carving and cutting the candles, uh, one for uh, making the candle bases, get a couple of uh, chairs, put the equipment on them, uh, get uh, a bucket of water and then everything is set and ready for work. Easy peasy. Nothing difficult. Okay, so we took a candle base and we need to warm it up a bit, just like always. Uh, this base is quite big, so we'll need about 40 seconds to warm it up and then we're gonna dip it uh, in the same way as we have done before. So, uh, we're gonna copy uh, the pattern, but not exactly. Yes, yes. The candle will have like the same color pattern, uh, the same picture pattern, but it's gonna be bigger, it's gonna be more beautiful, it's gonna look more interesting and look impressive. So it's really a great present, a great souvenir for someone you care about, someone you like. So, I can see that this time you've decided to use a club. Yes, this candle is much bigger, so uh, it's not always easy to get rid of all water. Experienced candle makers, candle masters, usually don't use any kind of club because they just learn how to dip uh, the candle correctly so that the water drops don't stay on the candle. But sometimes even they might need a cloth because the candle is too big. So, you can see that a big base fits pretty easily in the cell without touching uh, the walls. Each cell is uh, filled with paraffin so that you can wholly dip the candle in it. Everything is going fine here. I really like that the cells are white. Oh yes. Yes, that's really great. It's a protective animal. We decided to use it this time with this uh, wax melter, with this equipment, because it really protects the equipment. Plus, it really makes it look better. We didn't want to uh, make uh, the cells metallic. That's why we chose white. 
any color looks good in white and on white. It's all for you, dear customers. Yes, for each and every one of you. We can also say that uh, making uh, such big 20 centimeters candles is uh, kind of a sport. You might not see it looking at Sonia and how cheerful she is, but it's really heavy. The candle is heavy and it's kind of difficult to hold it for such a long time. So, girls, women, if you have uh, a man somewhere next to you at hand. You can ask him to dip the candle. It's gonna make it easier for you. Great peach color. Really like it. As always, it, it looks really tasty and delicious. Like some kind of a dessert. Candle boom pastry shop. <laughs> candle shop, candle boom. And that reminds me of 50 Cent and his candy shop. Yeah, but we have a candle shop anyway. <laughs> the way that the colors change on the candle is really interesting. It reminds me of some cherry or strawberry cake, something like that. Have a substantial meal before you start making the candle. That way it's gonna be easier for you in terms of the candle's weight. And uh, you're not gonna feel hungry looking at these tasty beauties. So, if I remember it correctly, the base becomes twice heavier after the dipping is over. So, a regular base weighs about 300 grams, but in the end of dipping it's going to be about 600 grams. And those bases that uh, have eight edges, they're going to be even heavier, 700-800 grams, approximately. So if you are not an arm wrestler who needs to work on his single hand all the time, <laughs> then you better work with both hands. Okay, wipe it off a little bit more. Are we going to make uh, to work with the um, edges to to make some? extra lines. Um, no, no. We are not gonna make the pattern too difficult. Yes, but some patterns they do require um, elaborate patterns, but not, not this one. When time comes we're gonna show you what to do in this case. Aha, uh -huh. so you are uh, dipping in white now. Does that mean that we're close to the end of dipping? Yes, yes, these are the last colors. A classic background is white. It's better to make it white or some cream, yellow hues. Milk, the color of milk. Uh, this background is like a sheet of paper. It should be neutral. 
Yes, and these colors are, all, are also popular for uh, the wedding theme, right? Yes, yes. Gentle colors, white hues, they really uh, match the wedding. I can feel how heavy it is just by looking at your hand. <laughs> and I can feel how heavy it is in my shoulders. Actually, uh, what you can do is um, when you're uh, making uh, a small candle, uh, you can write down the order of the colors and then make a bigger candle in the same color palette and with the same color order. But we usually uh, dip a big candle uh, more, so each layer uh, is going to be a bit more, a bit thicker. Which means that if you were making um, a blue candle and you dipped it twice, then you will have to dip it four times in case of a big candle. Yeah, it's a really huge candle. And frankly speaking, you can make it without these uh, stalactites and icicles on the bottom. You can either cut them or melt them a little bit. Just uh, don't melt the icicles in white. So there are easy uh, moments while uh, making a big candle and there are some difficult things. Because the candle is so big, it warms up uh, really well and it stays warm for a much longer time than we're used to. So you can work at it for a long, long time. Just don't take a break, a lunch break, before you finish. Because in this case, the candle is not going to wait for you. It will freeze. So this equipment uh, lets us uh, create a really big candle with a big thick base with eight edges. We've been dipping for quite a long time now, and I guess the most attentive viewers have already counted the number of layers that Sonia has made. As usual, uh, you can write uh, down there in the comments how many layers you've managed to count. I think I have about 25 here, but a lot of them, a lot of them, yes. You can dip until you have strength in your arms. Okay, so adding just a little bit of green in the end. And a bit more. I want to create the same uh, gradient like on a small candle. I only cool down in cold water the part that I dipped into paraffin. Yes, yes, that's very important. Otherwise, the candle is gonna uh, freeze more at the top. But we're gonna carve the top in the very end. So it's gonna be really cold for carving. So the rule is pretty simple. You only dip the part uh, that has just been dipped into paraffin in water. So first paraffin, then water. But just this very part, not the whole candle. What about this? Uh, these uh, wooden sticks in the cells? Don't they get in the way? Well, no, 
no, they don't. But it, it's really handy to keep them there because you can uh, mix the paraffin, if need be, right in the process, so you don't have to look for the sticks around. I think they look pretty identical now. What do you think? Yeah, looks like that. Okay, so clean uh, the wick while it is still warm. If you didn't do it in the very beginning, it's going to be much more difficult later when uh, the paraffin cools down and freezes. <laughs> That's the most interesting moment. What's inside? What's inside? And this is how you open up all the layers that you've just dipped. You can see them all right now. So, even? Uneven? What do you say? <laughs> I'm always waiting for you to say that. <laughs> for you to make a mistake, to slip, to make it uneven. No, no, it's even again. Yes, this is what I call a professional. So, I think... I'm going to make a similar pattern, since this is going to be one collection, in the one color pattern, I'm going to create a similar pattern in style. So the main element will be at the bottom part of the candle, and at the top I'm going to place a coffee flower or an iris, something like that, yes. <laughs> you can choose a scheme before you start working and follow it. But right now we're in some kind of an artistic process here. We write down color patterns and what we're gonna carve and then we just place um, the needed ready-made candle in front of us and just follow that pattern. Because you, when you're making a whole batch of candles, they all have to be and look the same. We have uh, a lot of repeating elements. Right now Sonia is rolling uh, the rolls at the bottom. So we're gonna use the same elements. Sometimes we can replace them or repeat them. Well, it depends on the pattern, of course. Now we're having uh, sheep rolls. <laughs> yes. Sonia, what's easier to carve? A 10 centimeter candle, a small one or a bigger one, 20 centimeters. Well, a 10 centimeter candle is uh, quick to carve, but uh, in the case of a 20 centimeter one, you can fit in more patterns and more elements on it, so it can look more dense. It it uh, cools down slower. So, let's say that we have uh, a person who has just watched our video tutorials and they have our equipment and they've decided to create a candle. Well, in this case, I would advise on uh, starting with the 10 centimeter candles. We also have uh, small cent uh, 7 centimeter candles. Are they good to start with for a newbie? No, no. 
7 cm candles are for more advanced uh, covers for more advanced level. So you should start, you should begin with the 10 cm candles, then uh, work with 20 cm because they uh, cool off slower and you can create more elements and more patterns on them. And then you can deal with the 7 cm candles, uh, sorry, 17 cm candles, and only then, in the very end, you can try and test yourself on the little ones on seven centimeters so the 10 centimeter candles are the best for uh, learning new candle covering skills and getting used to the materials and to this whole process Uh, if you decide to watch uh, the video tutorial with the same but 10 cm candle once again and then you watch uh, this tutorial uh, once more, then you will see that uh, the elements inside open up in the same way. So we're just coping the small candle but uh, making all elements bigger and thicker. But the elements are the same. Are you carving all edges at the same time, just uh, like you were doing with the small candles, to keep uh, the height, to keep all the levels uh, the same, not, not to lose them? Yes, yes. And this also uh, helps you to work faster. So yeah, we can recommend all our uh, apprentices, all our candle carving learners to do the same. Yes, so the quicker you carve the candle, the more time you will have in the end to correct some mistakes. Because while the candle is still warm, some elements can uh, uh, go down or lean or unroll. Anything can happen to them. Yes, so you should all uh, work uh, on your speed, on your skills. While you're working at home, in your kitchen or in any other room of your house, uh, close all the windows, turn the heaters on, because the warmer it is inside, the more time you will have to succeed. It's not too hot uh, in here today, but Sonia is working pretty fast, so we don't need extra warmth. And again, it looks like some kind of exotic fruit. Remember that movie, Avatar? <laughs> I think the pineapples uh, in there should have looked just the same. Okay, so all the elements have been cut and now I'm rolling them. The main thing here is to uh, keep all the levels, to follow all the levels and to be precise and pay attention to the sides and directions in which you roll the elements. So, when you are uh, rolling the elements, you skip one element all the time. Why? Why is that so? Why not doing them one by one? Because I'm gonna lose a lot of time on uh, changing the hands each time. So first I work with my right hand and I roll the elements that should be rolled uh, in the right direction and then I use my left hand and do it in the left. That's easier. Seems logical. Yeah, it's very pragmatic. <laughs> a pragmatic approach to carving candles. So it's art, of course, but we should be rational. We shouldn't make uh, decisions that weren't thought through.
so we've carved uh, the bigger pot, the bigger half of the candle. And we are above the middle. What about the candle? What about its consistency? Oh, it's still very warm, flexible. Has nothing changed? Well, surely it gets uh, a bit more elastic and flexible when it cools down. Yes, now it feels the best. When you're dealing with bigger candles, uh, they are too soft in the very beginning and it's easy to tear some element. But when some time passes, it be becomes easier. The temperature is the best. I know that some people make these rolls by uh, putting uh, a paper roll inside, under the petal, under the element, but I can say that it's really better to use your two fingers, because this way uh, the element doesn't stick to the paper and to your fingers as well. Uh, sorry, not to your fingers, but uh, to your uh, to the candle. Yes, the element doesn't stick to the candle and it doesn't stick to the paper. So that's a good skill to master. You really need to have a good eye on that and keep it, keep, keep your eye on the levels. So you begin at one level and you should finish at the same level as well. I've changed the hand again and now I'm rolling the elements with my left hand. So if you're left-handed you will still inevitably need to use your right hand <laughs> and if you're right-handed you're gonna use your left hand sometimes, so it gives you an opportunity to uh, practice working with both hands. Also a benefit. I wish I could learn how to do it so well just by looking at Sonia just by looking at how crafty she is and how her hands work. Okay, so, as the candle is a bit uh, longer and higher here, we've added uh, another level. And that's why the pattern became a bit more uh, difficult. Yeah, yes, it has a bit more elements than the small candles pattern. I've mentioned it uh, in the very beginning of the video that uh, I'm gonna add um, another uh, element. Yes. I was going to repeat uh, the small candles pattern uh, in the middle of this big candle and then add some extra pattern at the top. Sonia, can you show the elements on the big candle? So, yeah, they kind of create a, a fan, you can see, yes, here. 
it's really easy to fit some figurines or tablets or whatever you wish in in this place in the fan beads or stones gemstones whatever anything can you make it even more uh, elaborate yes you can create up to five elements two or three is what we usually do but you can make up to five do you have to carve them simultaneously? You have to uh, simultaneously carve uh, the top two elements. Top two elements at the same time, yes. It, it can be a bit difficult to comprehend while just listening. To it, so just just forget about it now. When when the time comes, we're gonna show you how to do it in a separate video. At the bottom, the candle is still very uh, warm, so you should work in a very very gentle way light fingers, so to say. Don't press it hard. We still have quite a lot of elements to make. This candle has a lot of levels so we're not going to be able to make a line on the whole length of the candle. If you don't know how to uh, make small cakes or snails, then you can just carve some tongues with the help of the loop knife. Small tongue elements. Sometimes you just don't have enough time for bigger and more difficult elements that are made with the loop knife if, if the candle cools down too quickly. Then it's really better to just carve the tongues. Very simple to make. All right, so now we're gonna uh, carve some extra elements with the loop knife. You're going quite deep in. Yes, because there are a lot of layers, so we need to go deep. When you use this loop knife to create an element uh, like that, uh, the depth of the cut should be even and the same on the whole length. Because when you're uh, going to be rolling the spiral, just like Sonia has, has done now, uh, the thinner part of the element can just tear down when you're rolling it. Well, and the spiral will not look beautiful as well, and the element in the end. So make, learn how to make uh, a good, deep, even cut that goes deeper and deeper. At the bottom, closer to the base, it's going to be thicker. But in the beginning, it's going to be thinner, of course. Do not press too hard on the candle and on the element with your fingers, because you are risking it. 
you can disturb the pattern. Sometimes you can see that uh, the paraffin uh, isn't even in uh, some places, but you can just press it back, roll it again. Sometimes the outer layer is uh, cooler already and closer to the core of the candle. It's still soft and hot due to the difference of temperatures while rolling the elements. That's okay. Don't be afraid of that. Just um, hold it in your hand with your fingers for a couple of seconds. The temperature will be the same due to the warmth of your hands and they're gonna roll just fine. Mm -hmm. So I can almost see the final pattern on the candle now. Yes, a couple more decorative elements that I'd like to add while the candle is still warm. While the candle is still warm, I can carve all the tongues, which I will later turn into snails. All these elements are made with one hand. A snail is a beautiful element and you can put it down, roll it down or you can uh, do it the, the other way around, you can lift it up. It's not a difficult element in terms of making it, so you just have to follow the certain proportions and uh, roll it uh, so that it's well rolled without any uh, cuts and tears. What are you going to have at the top? I'm going to repeat the same elements to make the, the pattern uh, look more even. I would say this pattern has some kind of a bio design, something connected with the nature, with snails. Plus, it reminds us uh, about our Candle Boom logo because it's a colored snail and it's one of our brand elements. Okay, the candle is ready. We just need to uh, make this hat at the top. When dealing with a 10 cm candle, we take uh, a narrow ring, but in this case, we can have and use a wider one. We have six of them, so perhaps, yeah, perhaps this one. Number four. If it's too narrow, it's not going to look beautiful here. So the optimal one is going to be number four, I think. You need to make quite a deep cut because we have more layers here. Press 
uh, the beans a bit to the wick. It's gonna burn better that way later on. Okay, now we can say that the candle is fully ready. Yes, everything is done. Okay, we're glad that you've just watched it and we're happy that you do it every time and would like to see you next time in the next video tutorial. This looks great.